Nick Bittison, uh, 2022 draft choice. Um, spent most of the year at Rancho, playing a lot of different positions too. Um, he is a power hitter, but you know, he just he, it was a rough year for him. Um, I think, um, yeah, it was a rough year, and you know, he's a round four pick. They obviously think a lot of him. He's got pop. He's got versatility. He's definitely got that Dodger, Dodger vibe. He's a hard worker. Has a great attitude. Just wants to go out and do work. Um, but you know, the results. He did get a, a promo to Great Lakes um, for the last month, which was cool. I was glad. I was really glad to see. That. You know, some of these guys that they're there the whole so long and they don't get promoted. Um, so it's good to see Nick promoted. He uh, only had, uh, you know, 338 at-bats with eight home runs. And so his OPS, 651, you know, his slug would have been... Uh, so I've got I've got JavaScript turned off so I don't get stats because the JavaScript kills these things. So, um, but yeah, his, his slug was, was under 400 also. So um, not the year that he wanted, I'm sure. Um, there's more there. And it's just a matter of him... Getting it together, I think maybe having so many positions he was playing being an issue, I'd like to see him settle at one. I have him as a third baseman because he was drafted, as I saw, as a third baseman, even though they say outfield here. He played a lot of outfield in college. He played a lot of outfield this year. But I still have him at third base. Um, I think that's a, a spot where um, he could excel. And so that's Nick Bittison. All right. Okay, newish third baseman, Michael Bush. Michael made really good progress this year. I mean, obviously at the plate, crushed everything this year. Um, 27 home runs and, what, 390 at-bats. Uh, OPS of over 1,000. He is, gosh, he's so ready. It, it kind of makes you, makes you sick thinking about it, right? Um, yeah, it, it's just, it's, um, he had a crazy year, got a chance, got his feet wet a little bit in the major leagues, still retains his rookie status for next year. Uh, I do think he comes in as a, as a candidate to play next year and should be on the bench then, uh, or, you know, and people have talked about him being traded, but you know, his value, that's it, man. It, <laughs> you either got to trade him now or you just, you got to play him. So I'm hoping that, that they keep him because I think he's a future all-star. Um, but he needs a chance. And so really it, it, it is only fair to say play him or trade him. Um, I do see Max Muncy coming back next year, so that makes it a little rough. But we, we just don't know what will happen in the offseason. If, um, if they have an early exit, you know, just don't be surprised what you may see this offseason. Um, but Michael Bush is clearly – earned it. And you know, I took a look at his um, fielding numbers before earlier today, or yes, yeah, earlier today. And I there's improvement. You know, um, during the season, he was rolling at about 900 fielding, fielding percent, which is pretty bad. I think he got it up to about 920. So that means he had some more success, more comfort. Um, he is athletic enough, definitely to play third base but I think another option for him is left field and I think it's just criminal he only played like two games in left field this whole freaking season when they need that versatility you know they, they need the versatility so that he can get, get his bat in the lineup I could see him being their left fielder next year if they just freaking play him uh, maybe they're just going well we're just gonna do one position at a time fair enough I'll buy I, I and I'm gonna buy that I, I think that's I would buy that. I'm, I just sold myself on that. So I think he would be, you know, letting him do this. And if they decide in this offseason he is not a future third baseman, put him in left field or trade him. But don't don't go spend a bunch of big bucks on on outfielders next year when when you could probably put someone like Michael Bush in left. Um, so yeah, this is you know we're all big fans of Michael Bush. I think on this channel. And um, play him or trade him. That's uh, that's the, that's what I'm seeing with that guy. 
All right, here we go. Luis Diaz, Mr. Stolen Base. He steals a lot of bases. Um, last year, uh, he spent just, yeah, he got, um, he was at Great Lakes most of the year. But then he got up to t uh, Tulsa at the end. Um, versatile, very fast. They have him as shortstop. I, he barely plays short. And he seemed to play enough third. Maybe it's third. Maybe it's the outfield. He's, kind of, he's a pretty dynamic guy. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, to play third, though, I think he does need to get more homers. Um, I think we, um, it's, a, it's a power position. So maybe he does. He, his best position might be all over the diamond. Um, very friendly dude. He was, a, in 2022, definitely the king of the peace sign. Um, if you guys seen my my photograph pho photography work, for uh, you know a lot of I love catching the guys just you know flashing, flashing a peace sign um, at us to you know just for a little attention. So Luis, um, yeah, very fast. Last year at Rancho he seemed to steal quite a bit too. Man, I thought last year he was in the 40s or 50s in stolen base. Even 25 this year is pretty good. For uh, you know, for an organization that really doesn't steal that much, so um, yeah, that's uh, Luis Diaz. Um, expect him to start in um, in Double A again, but uh, he's at twenty four, so he's coming up, and he's definitely eligible for the Rule Five. So you never know with him; uh, he might get he might be a guy that uh, that gets that gets picked up. Okay. Rain Donkon Donkey, as he's affectionately known. Oh, I need to put his uh, chat. He had, we had a, we had an interview with him in Spanish at the begin near the beginning of the season. Very very friendly guy. Lots of power. I you know I saw him when he started playing third. And I just thought it was natural. I just thought he looked really good over there. Uh, he as he gets older, he's thickening up, but he's not getting he's not going Jock Peterson on us. Um, he's 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 a strong strong young man. He's only twenty. He just turned twenty. I kinda, he, it still amazes me how young some of these guys are. And um, I'm a big believer in him. And he played a lot of shortstop, played a lot of second. Uh, he's even played some outfield before. I don't remember if he played much this year. Um, but he's a guy that um, I'm I'm a huge fan of. Like I said, there was some pop there. Uh, needs to be a bit more third, but I think overall he has some things. I, I'm just a little, you know, the numbers. <laughs> numbers are not where he wants to be. I think, you know, at the end of the year he got hurt. Um, you know, he, so he had, he had some nagging injuries at the end of the year. Um, he'll be, he should be at Great Lakes next year. And I, I expect, I expect, a, to be honest, I expect a lot from him. Um, I wrote him up um, early 2022 after seeing him in spring training. That was when he was like 18, thin, thin kid, and I was, he's getting stronger. You know, some of these guys, it's just, they're getting their man strength. They're just turning 20. Lots of growth, right, between 18 and 22, especially maturity-wise, but definitely um, physically. So... He's still he's still coming getting his uh, everything together. So um, I expect a lot from him this coming year. So I uh, like I'm a big fan of his, and um, really you know really want to see him do well. All right, our next one's the big one here. Jake Geloff, our round two pick, 60th pick in the draft. I think he's a steal, absolute steal. I know the numbers aren't overwhelming. I saw a, a bit of him. Um, we also have an article about him. Uh, his brother's with the A's in the major leagues. Um, and he went to Virginia. Like I said, 60th pick in the draft this last year. He's just a ball. He's a ball player. Um, at third, he looks really good. I think that is his position. I don't want to see him anywhere else. Um, he's just, everything's, that's his spot. So um, I'm going to be honest. I think that uh, if Michael Bush doesn't take this sucker over, um, the next guy in line, not but in a couple years, will be will be Jake. Um, I think he moves fast. Uh, very very impressed with him. I really liked what I saw. 
the no, you know, he started out hot. Now this, then his, you know, his numbers kind of sat a little bit near the end. Um, you know, quite, you know, he had a few strikeouts, but um, yeah, he's a guy that uh, I really, you know, they put him right there in the third spot. They, that's who they, that's where, that's where he's going to be. And I think next year, um, he, so he'll be 22 in February. I, he might start at Rancho, but I'm, I'm leaning towards no. I'm leaning towards um, Great Lakes. So um, it was fun watching him at Rancho, the brief time he was there. But yeah, he's going to go to Great Lakes. He was, he was he's, he's, he's definitely, um, yeah, he just, he's, even though his numbers don't indicate, it, he's definitely a man amongst boys out there. He's mature enough, solid, solid. He's got, he's just got it in him to, um, to be a really good ball player. And, uh, and we're going to see it. We're going to see it. Um, just enjoy it. the power. I saw some doubles out of him. Um, saw some good at bats. Again, a few a few strikeouts, but you know that for some that doesn't bother people. Well, doesn't bother the the Dodgers, that's for sure. We can see um, you know he had some uh, got a player of the week 912. Um, that was near the end. Uh, let's see. He was brought up August 3rd. That was exciting. It's it's really it's really fun to be at Rancho, um, and when they because it, it's kind of a cool time because the new college players are coming in, but also guys are getting promoted. So that's a really cool thing. Uh, we still haven't seen any big cuts yet. That's good, but uh, it's coming when they have to get down to one sixty five. So um, put Jay Geloff by the end of the year. He'll be in the top 10, end of 2024, top 10 for the Dodgers, and start making in the top 100. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of booking that one right now. So I'm, we're definitely, you know, I'm on the Jay Geloff Express. The only real question is, are you? I'm going to check the chat really quick to see if there's anything about it. Um, nope. So that's Jay Geloff, and um, just be ready. And go, man, watch him when you can. I know Great Lakes next year will, you know, they televise. Just FYI, the Quakes were looking at that, but it hadn't happened. But uh, keep your eye on him. This is not the pitcher the Dodgers lost to the Pirates. It's a, um, it's a third baseman. They have him as a shortstop, but he played more third base this year than anything. Another Jose Hernandez. Um, he was way down in the Dominican Summer League. I saw his numbers. I saw the 938. OPS, I said, I must include him. Let's at least get him on the radar, right, folks? So a Venezuelan, uh, Jose Daniel Hernandez, I just want to get him on the radar. Um, not much I haven't seen him play, so we're not going to talk too much about it, but a 290 batting average, a 404 on base percentage, and a 938 OPS, bring it. So we will see him next year. He's a little older. When did they sign him? Oh, they signed 2019, so he's been around. Interesting. His career stats, uh, he's really, he made a big improvement this year. You can see it. Um, so maybe uh, ACL, Arizona uh, Cactus League next year will be the case, will, will be the place for uh, Mr. Hernandez. And maybe a little chance to see him at Rancho because he is older and they need to move him. This is one of those things, you got to move him up or move him on. So age 20. And he, he turns 21 in April. So, yeah, move him up or move him on. All right, folks. Cody Hosey. The guy. At least we thought he was he was going to be the new ginger at third base. And um, it, it hasn't happened. He's been hurt so, so much. And even he's still, still at double A. Um, so he only was injured, quote, once this last year. So that's better. And he actually got some time at second. And he hit, you know, so 344 at bats. He had 11 homers. That's not too bad. Consider that's almost doubled his career because he's been hurt so much. Um, but the uh, batting average is still not there. On base, no, it's it's just he's still not there, and he's 26. He's been eligible for the Rule Five. Um, 
No one's going to take him yet. But hopefully, uh, hopefully he's blessed with just one more real chance. One more chance. Just give that. I just want to see him get one real chance for a nice, healthy age. Let me, physically, right? Six foot four, 200 pounds. You know, big kid, plays third base, you know. Dang. This is the guy that should be our starting third baseman this year. But it just didn't happen. That's the, you know, that was the pick. He was drafted ahead of Michael Bush. So, like they say, let that sink in. Or is Elon in his sink? Um, <laughs> what can you say? You know, he's been playing baseball in this organization since 2019. And he barely has over a thousand at-bats. So, um, just still hasn't, just hasn't had that, that blessed with health. And, um, so we'll see what happens with him. He, they might as well just put him up to AAA, get him, get him close. See if he's, if he's there. If not, you know, you definitely need to, you know, move him up or move him on. Um, right now it's almost like he's depth and I, I hate that. I hate that for the guy. I've, he's quiet. I've never, I've seen him. But I've never really met him. He's just quiet. Um, so hopefully we see something out of him this year. See see him just get a real shot and and just stay healthy and and try and be able to fulfill his potential. Cause um, dang, Tulane. I think that's where Andrew Friedman went. That's where Andrew Friedman went to college. Is Tulane. So um, yeah, didn't happen there. Brandon Lewis from UC Irvine, round four, local boy, and hit 199. Um, they moved him kind of quick in 2021. He's, you know, he's older, but oh man, has he slowed down. Um, he's really spent the last couple years in uh, with Tulsa. And they haven't moved him up. So another guy, same draft as Cody Hosey and Michael Bush. Um, yeah, just dang. A lot of power, but even, you know, look, look at this year, man. 337 at-bats, only seven dongs. When his career, 74 home runs in, you know, that if you split his, that's like split over three seasons, it's like 25 a year. So, um yeah, he's something needs to turn on with him, or maybe the, you know who knows. Maybe he's his glasses. Uh, who knows? Um, like I like to say, baseball's hard, and each guy they have a level, right? So both Hosey and Lewis need to just they got to break through that ceiling that's that's there. Um, man. He had a real good dude. Plays a lot of first, but I I put him at at, uh, at third because I think I you know that first most of the guys that are just first basemen alone are going to be you know lefties, <laughs> and the Dodgers the rest of them are going to try to move them around. Um, so yeah, that's mm, Brandon Lewis. Good luck, Brandon. Get it get it going, man. I hope he, I hope he gets it going. One of our long lost guys who got hurt shoulder injury um, looked like was Kyle Nevin. Kyle was off to a great start and was playing all over the place, um, but looked good in left, looked really good in center, looking good at third. Um, they had him initially as a first baseman when he came up. That's all he was really playing, but now they've really messed around in a good way with him. Um, he is 22. Yeah, born in La Jolla, went to school at Poway, which is down the road from me. Um, he was off to such a nice season. Um, they had, what was that, 312 batting average, 388 on base percentage, 861 OPS. Started showing some pop. He didn't have one last year. Um, but he, he, I saw him hit one in spring training. And then, um, yeah, he just, he went out and that was it. So a real bummer on, on Kyle Nevin, but I I like what I saw. He's I think he's a really nice hitter. And, um, you know, he's got the genes. You know, his, his pops was the manager of the Angels, but it's clearly, 
all Phil Nevin's fault that the Angels fell apart because he made all those trades, made all those dumb moves and everything. That really, you can't fire the owner, but um, that owner is is a whack job, and he deserves to lose Shohei. But I feel bad for the Angels fans. What needs to happen to the Angels? They need to make some uh, make one trade. That's to trade owners. But Kyle, we'll see. Um, I didn't get the details of his injury. Um, so I'm hoping he's back. I think he does. From what I remember, he'll be ready for the beginning of the season. Let's hope so. Um, I think he's going to be a good one. I mean, he was around 11. He was also one of those guys that, you know, probably could have gone back to college. He went to Baylor um, out in Texas. Um, so, yeah, Kyle Nevin, I'm very... I like I like the kid too. So, you know, we we had some mutuals and um, good guy. And uh, I think there's also um, if you look at him, I don't believe the six four two hundred. I believe he weighs a lot less than that. But he's getting stronger. You can see it. Again, there some of these guys are still developing in their physically, and so Kyle's getting his man strength is coming. I mean, his dad had some pop. Little, you know, and his dad wasn't wasn't thin. He wasn't he wasn't fat either, but he was he wasn't uh, he wasn't a thin guy. So we shall see about Mr. Nevin. I'm gonna try this. Rainier, 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 Ramirez, um, DSL. Uh, he stood out. Um, he's 18 and really, yeah, he turns 19 in December. When do we sign him? Oh, he's uh, oh, he's brand new. They got him this year. That's right. Okay, cool. So brand new. Um, so that's a long ways before Rule Five. Um, he'll be probably at ACL next year and a nice year. You now the two sixty five batting average, six home runs and one hundred seventeen at bats, right all day. Um, on base percentage four hundred three, OPS nine sixteen. There's there's a guy right there. Again, just um. Ooh, look at his middle name, Odalis. Remember the Odalis Perez, Dodger lefty, long mid what early two thousands. Um, Odalis Perez. Um, but yeah, um, wanted to guess this is the you know kind of the uh, the awareness of, of this guy. I like to get just guys out there. And we'll uh, we'll just we'll keep track of some of these guys. We'll we'll be seeing them. And they make the highlights. We'll we'll go. Oh yeah, we were talking about him. Um, so we'll see. That's our uh, Ranier. What I don't know. I'm, I know I'm wrong. Rainier, Rainier, something like that. So that's our guy right there. And we'll see what happens with him. Kind of excited to watch him. But ACL next year, hopefully. Actually, mm, I'm gonna go DSL one more time. That's the way they're going to roll with him because he's just a brand new one. So they're working. They're working with him. Last but not least, Logan Wagner, the mysterious Logan Wagner, who has had a total of sixty-one at bats since being drafted. They are babying him. That's for sure. But he was hurt. Let's see. He was placed on right out of the shoot. Um, for the season, right on the a, uh, disabled list or injured list, whatever. Activated for the last few games, played very little. Um, switch hitter. They had they they draft him as shortstop. He's not a shortstop. He did he has played a little second, but you look at him, he's a third baseman. Just it's there, um, and he's young. He's still 19, turns 20 in March. So he would be going into his sophomore year <laughs> this year. Uh, he's a baby. Um, so I am, fingers crossed, I don't know what the injury was. Um, tried to find out. Um, I, I don't reach out to the players. I just try to, you know, I listen. It's kind of, I don't want them to, um, so the players... In general, well, here's the situation. One time I asked a player, um, and one of the trainers was around. I asked him, hey, what's what's up? What's up? What's your, wh why are you out? And the player started talking to me, and the trainer shut me down, shut him down. 
I don't want to put the players in that situation. So I don't want to put Logan in that situation. He's a really good kid. Um, hardcore Crizzo. I don't want him to feel like he's got to deceive me. Um, so I don't, I don't want to put players like, like in that, in that, in that place. So, and you know, him and I do share, share the same faith. So, um, but yeah, I don't want to, I know how it is. I don't want, I don't want to put him in a spot and I don't put it. So I'm not going to put any player in a spot, but definitely some young guy who, you know, just hear some old guy asking him questions. He's going to, a lot of these guys that will respect me just because of my age. <laughs> Which, okay. Thank I appreciate that. And that's kind of a good thing. Because I, uh, the, the old respect your elders, I'm into it. Um, yeah, Logan Wagner, um, six pick, or six round pick, sorry. But he was also, they they really worked hard. They gave him a nice bonus. I remember that. I don't remember the number, but they really wanted him. He w They didn't expect to get him. So he was a big, big pick um, and a big, big, a big get. 